It's not that I don't experience fear. I just can override the fear, which isn't a good thing, I've realized. They call cut and he comes up to me and he goes, that was the most disturbing thing I've ever seen and I need you to never do that again. Our joke now is, how many seasons would it take for us to become at each other's throat? I think the going guess is four. Hi, Judy, Donnie. So nice to see you. Thanks. Nice to see you. So excited to talk to you about Reboot today. Ooh. Remember I told you they were rebooting my old show? Is she going to be there? You mean Brie? I'm stuck and I can't breathe. Oh, uh, fine. But I'm in a committed relationship. What are you, 15? I got it. <sighs> I, mean, I, I thought it would be weird if uh, the first time we saw each other was on set. That would be weird. You know how in the old sitcom, the characters always did the right thing? Man! They don't do the right thing anymore. Oh, boy. What if Zach finds out? Finds what out? Uh, that I couldn't talk to your mom yet. Too hard, huh? No. No, I wouldn't say that. Not that. The show is like a new spin on all the reboots that we've been seeing. Um, it's kind of the behind the scenes antics of bringing back a hit 90s sitcom with a lot of F-bombs. <laughs> so it's like not the broadcast 90s sitcom. I counted five F-bombs oh. in the first one minute of the show. That's good. Um, I was wondering if any of those are improvised or if they're all written in the scene. Like, do you just have free reign to drop them willy-nilly? No. Well, I mean, Judy has a very colorful language, period. So um, they have to dial back on her swear Even words. think that Foul a words. lot of them are mine, Johnny. Foul words fight themselves to come out of her mouth first. Okay, I do, I do have a potty mouth, but I don't think they're all mine. And definitely, I think sometimes um, we have been told, okay, so I have been told to maybe not say it as much. I'm going to ask a very obvious question, but I am genuinely interested if you could reboot any series, what would it be? And what should never be rebo rebooted because it was too perfect? Johnny? Wow. Thank He's you. He's going to say, and like. Please, and please, Judy, give me my time <laughs> because she loves to talk over me. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, I don't. Never. Um, I never do that. I don't see how you make Sanford and Son any better. <laughs> you know, Red Fox. Uh, was amazing. LaWanda Page, Gary Shandling wrote on that show. Uh, it was it was an amazing show. So, would you want that to be rebooted? Is no, that like... no. I think don't do that. I think. But then, reboot. which one would you want? Oh, I would say I would not have reboot Sex in the City, but then I really loved it. So, I would have been like, just let it be what it is. And then yeah. I like I was addicted to it. Judy, your Instagram blurb has. A few interesting things. Knitter, psychic, mm -hmm. vegan, collector of jars, brass animals, and alcoholic friends. Yes. So I want to focus all on accurate. Is it psychic or psycho? <laughs> Burn. When we get out of this Zoom room, Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> um, but the jars, like how many jars have you collected and what do you put in said jars? I don't put anything in the jars. I just have so many. I can't, I have a really hard time getting rid of things. And so like salsa jars, jam jar, you know, like any jars that, uh, come, um, like that I buy food. in. <laughs> so I clean them. And then in my mind, I'm like, Oh, this is great. I can like, can give someone a gift in this jar or something. And we just end up having a lot of jars. And then like every couple months I have to sort of like do like a jar clean out. You know, like jam jars. Like, didn't, don't you save that stuff? <laughs> oh, I love this peek in the Judy's mind. You know, I have an idea that we can reuse these glass jars. <laughs> it's very admirable. I right. was envisioning you going to like Parisian flea markets and buying like vintage jar like bottles oh, no, 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 from like 1990. No, no, no. Yeah, no, it's anymore. nothing exciting. Although I do have some really nice blue tinted mason jars, but those were a gift. And you can get them at Target. Okay. <laughs> Johnny, pivoting to health and wellness, because I feel like it's something that everyone's focusing on a lot more these days. Start with Johnny. Well, I'm dying. Are focusing <gasps> on it. So I have a specific Johnny question and a specific Judy question. We'll start with Johnny. How are you not afraid to hurt yourself? And what do you do to take care of your poor body? Um, well, it's not that I don't experience fear. I just can override the fear, 
which isn't a good thing. I've realized I came to uh, realize that um, <laughs> magical thinking is great for stunts and footage, but not really useful in normal life. And I exercise at the gym every day because I have to, because of my injuries, I have to keep my body semi strong uh, or yeah. strong as I can be, which isn't very. So yeah, that's how I take care of myself. Um, Judy, so you launched a supplement line for women, which I feel like is amazing. Thank um, you. It has amazing reviews oh, and good. the names are so clever, but I wanted to ask like back to TV, Trank Drank is like a stress relieving drink, right? Yeah. That claims to offer serenity now without troublesome <laughs> side effects. And I yeah. was wondering, immediately I thought Seinfeld and I was like, yes, is that a serenity reference? Now. Okay. Is it no. in alcohol? No. <laughs> CBD, CBD. Yes. No, no, it's all natural ingredients. I can bring you some to work if we get to work together again, Johnny Knoxville. Well, um, I don't want to bring you back for season two, but uh, I hate I him. We'll see. Um, <laughs> we're just, uh, yeah, uh, I really like the Trank Drink. I drink it at night before bed with a few drops of the Unworry Tincture, and mm. I have been sleeping so well. And yeah. I'll um, send you well, some, Johnny. You. you might be yes, too please. old for them, though. Yeah. Because they're for your what 40s. See how she hurts my feelings? <laughs> All I am is nice to her. Only a true friend could do that, though. So you guys were lovely. Thank you for spending time with me. Hey, Thank Audrey. You. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Paul. Thank you for chatting with me about Reboot. You bet. If you could reboot any series, what would it be? Or is there a series that absolutely should never be touched? I would reboot this one. I'd like to see season two of this. It's not a reboot. <laughs> it would be called season two. I'd like to do that. I think we all would like to do season two. We were all just chatting. We were, you know, we had such a great time making it. And we only made eight, you know, which is the new world. That's such a fun, light load. I mean, I'm not writing them, so I'm sure it's not that easy. But it ain't 23. It's eight. So we all had such a great time. We all enjoyed working together. And uh, now we're all enjoying this wonderful moment of seeing the work finished. And we're, our joke now is how many seasons would it take for us to become at each other's throat? I think the going guess is four. Season four, we get a little cranky perhaps. But on eight episodes, maybe we'd make it further. I don't know. But this one should come back. Um, the writer's room in the show and in every show just looks like the funnest place to work to me. And there was a particular scene that's like a very small thing, but it made me laugh the hardest of all the episodes I watched was when one of the writers um, gets called two soups for ordering two soups at lunch. We love and two soups. We were just talking about that. It was so funny to me. Um, what was funny about it to you? That Have you been in rumors and ordered oddly? No, I just think that happens in real life. And part of the show is like, Rachel, your character is trying to keep everything real. And I've had so many instances where like someone does something silly or weird or quirky and then they call you that same thing. And it just, I don't know, for whatever reason, it really stuck with me. And I thought it was so funny. So I was wondering if, uh, yeah. yeah. Have either of you ever gotten a nickname, either personally or professionally, that was really funny? When there's an underlying love, you can really call people out. You can really call people out on Remember, I wrote for the show Robot Chicken, and I think it was my I think it was my boss, Seth Green, who said that my motto was monologues are the soul of wit. Just because like I I just my every sketch I wrote had just some sort of, I don't know, big monologue. And then when I was on Crazy X, uh, I was on set and the on set writer uh, that day was this guy, Renee Gube, who also was on the show. And I was doing a really simple thing. It was an insert shot of me buttering toast. And I guess the way I butter toast is really crazy and they call cut and he comes up to me and he goes that was the most disturbing thing i've ever seen on a screen and i need you to never do that again yeah i just had an experience like this where i shared something that i've only really learned in the last two years is the whole shaving of the butter that if you oh, just you, get the shaving mm -hmm. then it spreads whereas you, right. I, you and i were raised in the same apparent environment of get as much as you can <laughs> per scoop it's so funny. My husband, that drives him insane because I will shave the top of the butter very thinly all the way across and then it ends up like this yes. and you have yeah. a big divot. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know what? I'd get out of this marriage. I don't see, I don't see if you can pass <laughs> this. I think that's going to be irreconcilable. 
Um, one of the episodes is titled um, What We Do in the Shadows, which is coincidence because one of my favorite shows that has been on the past few years is What We Do in the Shadows. Um, and wondering if you can share what you're currently watching and loving, aside from Reboot. I also love What We Do in the Shadows. I'm a little behind on this current season, but uh, it makes me laugh out loud. Uh, like that and Always Sunny make me laugh out loud consistently more than any other show on TV. Um and I just got into Severance, finally, and it's great. I'm a little behind. I'm watching the Dick Van Dyke show. And, oh, no. Uh, no, I'm kidding. But I am behind, for, for sure. We are just now finishing up Yellowstone, which I was late to the party, which is really good. It's The Godfather on Horses. And uh, uh, started Hack Season 2 last night. And I started watching this uh, Ethan Hawke's Paul Newman, Joanne Woodward documentary thing have you seen that hbo it's really cool it's really, good. it's really interesting yeah there must be more that i'm watching i can't think of it i got scared of severance i got i got like three episodes in and when i think i'm gonna be get a headache or something it's oh, just, it stressed you out. it's very oppressive yeah i don't need to i have that already happening the brain surgery yeah and that's where i got off it, i mean got uh, out i didn't get off on it i got it, out on it it, it uh, gave me a a weird nightmare that night it also reminded me of getting my epidural when i gave birth yeah, no one wants to be reminded of that um well epidural great place to wrap um it was great talking to you both and the show was wonderful i can't wait for everyone to see it thank you um, thank you so much well, we're definitely on the lookout for breakthrough shows so what do you got i want to reboot the old sitcom step right up step right up. <laughs> step right. are you serious and I want to do it with the original cast. According to Wikipedia, Clay Barber, drug charge and disorderly conduct, Bray Marie Jensen did a low-budget sci-fi cable show. Captain, I'll repair them as soon as I nourish my larva. And Reed Sterling left to pursue a film career. I'm the ruthless mother standing here with a 38 snub nose. You know what? I was thinking, what if I infused it with a layer of weariness and vulnerability? Maybe don't think. It's just not what they taught us at the Yale School of Drama. <laughs> okay, we're done. Remember I told you they were rebooting my old show? Is she gonna be there? You know what I mean, Brie? I'm stuck and I can't breathe. Oh, uh, this. Fine, but I'm in a committed relationship. What, are you 15? I got it. <sighs> Hi. I, I, I thought it would be weird if uh, the first time we saw each other was on set. That would be weird. Everyone, this is Gordon. He is the creator of the original show. Gordon, new writers. This is one of those diversity intern training things? Uh, literal gas. Comedy's evolved since you last wrote for television. I mean, honestly, whole species have evolved. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, guys, let's bring it in. No reason to do that.